Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Fully Charged Gardener. Thank you very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. So we're going to be talking about wisteria a little bit more today. And one thing I want to talk about is seed pods. As you'll have seen in my last video on the pergola, there was lots of seed pods dangling down. Now normally what I do is I'll prune those off earlier in the season because if a plant is creating seed pods, that takes a lot of energy and we want the energy back into these buds for our beautiful flowers. So do we prune off the seed pods? Yes, we do. Again, back to your two to three buds and we just get rid of these seed pods because they're taking up energy. Dead simple to do, just like that. Now, the other thing I'd like to talk about is, and I know we've been talking about pruning back to two to three buds, but if you get spurs with short growth on like these here, if we can get our camera in a little bit closer, you get a lot of these spurs with really short buds. Now you can get away with not pruning those this winter and just leave those to flower and then deal with the, the long leggy growth when we do our summer pruning. But growth like this, we want to take off like so. Again, going back to what I talked about in the previous video, just take it off in sections, just like so. But growth like this, still back to two to three buds. Now, this wisteria didn't get pruned back in the summer. And if we can get the camera to go back just a little bit and just pan up and you can see all that crazy growth so summer pruning really does make a difference. Now, what I hope you can see here in that wide shot is how I've tried to train this wisteria into lateral growths. So we've spaced the, the training wires about a foot apart. And then if you think about when a wisteria flowers, how those flowers hang down, and these all hang down like bunches of grapes. And I'll insert a picture now to show you what this looks like in flower with my little daughter sat on the bench there. So again, the rest of it is just back to two to three buds. Now, the other thing I'd like to mention when it comes to pruning is the basics of pruning just about anything, basically. So you wanna start off going through your plant and look at anything that's sort of dead, diseased or damaged. And it just so happens that we've got a piece of dead wood here. And it's quite easy to identify. It's a very different color. You can see how it's damaged. So what we'll do is we'll prune that right back and it's gone. So any dead, diseased, damaged wood, we get rid of. And one thing that I'm trying to achieve here with this wisteria especially, because it's on quite an exposed site, is I'm pruning so that we're restricting the plant from coming away from the wall too much, because you think of all the forces that that's gonna be putting on these supports over time, and we're focusing our pruning into filling up these gaps along the lateral because as we've slowed down the, the sap along this stem now, all the energy is going into these outer buds and see how I've stopped that one up here. So over time, this will do what this one here has done and it'll branch out and that's just going to give you more clusters of flowers. You can see up here how we're going to get a nice cluster of flowers on there. I'll stop this growth here just like that, and I'll stop this one because it's coming out. So that's the other thing I'd just like to talk about quickly is when we talk about pruning back to two to three buds, um, you've got to think of your pruning as like a steering wheel on a car. So depending on which bud you prune back to, you can ultimately dictate the direction the plant's going to grow. So if you cut to an outward facing bud like this one, it's going to grow this way. If you were to go back to the one next one down, which is facing towards the wall, you're going to send the growth towards the wall. So you can use your sectors as a steering wheel. So you can ultimately dictate the shape of the plant. And as you can see, once you get into the swing of it, it's actually quite a quick process. And again, not pulling the growth down through, just taking it off in nice sections, nice controlled sections. So you're not damaging new buds on the way through. It really is amazing how much growth wisteria will put on in a year when it's established. It really does fly away. 
tackle again. We'll just, and then we'll just take these off. And I do everything matching the layers of the wire. I just find it nice and easy and systematic approach to doing it. And um, yeah, nice and methodical. Let's get the ladder out in a minute because I'm only a short ass. And um, one way I like to describe winter pruning of wisteria especially, being a deciduous plant, it's almost like getting an x-ray of a plant. You know, without all the foliage, you're getting to see the bare bones of the plant and it makes it so much easier to do your pruning. Okay, job done. So as you can see, it's such a simple process. Um, you don't need to worry about being precise with your two to three buds. Remember that any of these short little spurs you can leave, they'll all flower nicely. Um, our aim on this wall is not to let the plant come too far away from the wall. We're keeping it quite compact. So most of our pruning is focused on this side and keeping the growth going back. Again, use your secateurs as your steering wheel pick your buds wisely and you can direct which way your growth goes. We've got this space nice and evenly about a foot apart. So when it does flower, all those flowers are gonna hang down nicely into each other and just look like bunches of grapes. It's almost like um, espalier trained um, apples and pears. That's the way I like to look at it. Um, not everybody likes this formal structure of wisteria pruning. Some people like the more relaxed look all down to personal preference. This is just the way that I do it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, just stick them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. Cheers.